28, the triumph of the king. The book of Matthew is not about Christianity. The book of Matthew presents the Lord Jesus Christ to the nation of Israel, confirming the covenants and promises to the nation of Israel concerning an earthly, literal, physical kingdom that's set up on the earth. Christianity is something far different. Christianity revolves around the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's a no difference Jew and Gentile message. Um, the book of Matthew is law. It's the, it, the Lord Jesus Christ was made of a woman made under the law, the Mosaic law. We're not under the law today, we're under grace. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change. But his dealings with mankind down through history change as his as his revelation is progressively revealed. And if you don't recognize those changes, you begin to take things that God was doing in a bygone era and try to force them into your expectations and your understanding of what God is doing today. And uh, that leads to confusion and misunderstanding because God's truth is absolute. And the book of Matthew is truth. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. We study the Bible from one end to the other but we recognize what God is doing at a particular time. Gain the, the prophet, gain the instruction, gain the illustration from it, but we don't take the, the doctrinal things that pertain to the Jewish people and try to force them upon us. We're Gentiles. We're, the, the gospel of the grace of God went out into the Gentile world in the Gentile culture for 2,000 years. Nations in all, all different corners of the world. And... Uh, different cultures. You're not going to take the different Gentile cultures and try to turn them into, a, into a, uh, a replica or some type of facsimile to the nation of Israel. God set that program aside and sent a Gentile gospel out to the Gentile world, uh, an everyman message, a no difference message, a grace message that proclaims the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ not just as a historical fact, but as the very basis whereby we can have eternal peace and, 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 and revelation and, and relationship with God himself. But when we come to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28 begins with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We saw last time there are multiple appearances of Jesus Christ the day of his resurrection. And the, the empty tomb is a fact, and his disciples... And the people that he was closely associated with didn't believe he was going to raise from the dead. They didn't believe the, the, the reports of the empty tomb. They didn't naturally associate it with a resurrection. They thought someone took the body. Uh, they, they, didn't, they weren't looking at, that's evidence, that they weren't preaching the same message you and I preach. They weren't looking at Jesus to be a sacrifice for sin, raising from the dead as the author of eternal life. They were looking for him as a king to conquer the Gentile uh, establishment and, uh, and to exalt the nation of Israel and set up a kingdom on the earth. So they were defeated and they were surprised. They, they wondered in amazement at the resurrection and at the empty tomb. And so the Lord is appearing to the, to the, to the has these different appearances the day of his resurrection. He appears... Um, <clears throat> Matthew 28, 1, the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, uh, they, they came to see the sepulcher. They came to anoint the body of the Lord Jesus, um, and thinking that it, was, that it was not properly attended to. They fully expected the body to still be in the tomb. And, of course, we, we see the, the, the events here that the Lord has raised from the dead before sunup, and has, has these multiple appearances. Um, verse, um, verse 5, The angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. They expected him still to be there. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples word. Now Mary Magdalene was there first, according to the Gospel of John. She saw the empty tomb from a distance. And she immediately ran to get uh, the disciples. Ran to get Peter and John. And Mary leaves 
to go get Peter and John while the women there have the encounter with the angel. The angels uh, speak to them and say, now go tell the disciples. While they go, Peter and John, according to the gospel of John, they come. Um, and so, so there, there's several different things kind of happening simultaneously here. But the ladies have, have had the appearance of the angel. And verse number 9, as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by his feet and worshipped him. Now notice here the, the, the ladies worship him and they fall down at his feet and grab him. Hold your hand here and go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20 and this is why you have four gospel accounts because you have different events taking place from different perspectives. Describing the same general event but looking at it from different, different viewpoints. Um, Mary she arrives back at the tomb after the ladies have left. Uh, John chapter 20 verse 11, But Mary stood without the, at the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Mary's there by, the, by herself, uh, and Jesus appears to her and speaks to her. Um, verse number 16, Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. She recognizes his voice. Um, she probably didn't recognize him from appearance. Why would that be? He's been crucified. He's been savagely beaten, and, uh, and, and his visage was so marred more than any man. But she recognized his voice. Now, this is the resurrection body of Jesus Christ. That means when you and I, we're going to have a body fashioned like his, you're going to have the same voice. Um, you, there's, there's going to be the same physical appearance and some of the phys same physical characteristics when we are given our resurrection body fashioned like his. But it will be in a different form. It'll be a spiritual body. It'll be a, a, a glorified body. But Mary recognizes him. Um, verse 17, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and to your Father, and to my God, and your God. This is the first appearance of Jesus Christ to Mary at the tomb, and Jesus says, don't touch me. I have to ascend to my Father. And so from this point, if you go over to Matthew, and as they went to tell his disciples, the women head back into the city of Jerusalem and as they go Jesus appears to them and he greets them all hail and verse 9 they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him this is still early in the morning so within, a, within an hour or two at the most Jesus has gone from the earth where Mary couldn't touch him to ascend to his father and come back to the earth and now it's okay to touch his body to, to physically come in contact with him that's remarkable that's the same kind of body that you and I are going to have we are going to have a glorified body capable of interplanetary space travel uh, it's an amazing thing uh, because we're going to be doing the king's business in the heavenly places um, it, it, it's a remarkable thing so but here Jesus appears to the women and they, they held him by the feet and worshipped him. Verse 10, Then Jesus said unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they shall go into Galilee and there shall they see me. So they are to go give the disciples word. Now this is something that's, that's a little bit confusing to me because here Jesus tells her to go tell the, the disciples I'm going to meet him up in Galilee, yet there are several appearances here in Jerusalem. Um, obviously, they make plans. to They're going to go up north, you know, 15, 20, 30 miles, however far it is, to meet the Lord up in Galilee, which is up, up north of Jerusalem. And yet the Lord appears multiple times here in Jerusalem, um, the day of his resurrection. So... The, um, the, the Lord gives the, gives the women instructions to tell the disciples, when you, when you catch them, that they are to meet me up in Galilee. 
Now you're here in the book of Mark. <coughs> um, come over to Mark chapter 16 and notice Mark's account. There, there's, there's multiple appearances. And I put the, uh, on your handout there, I put a list. Um, there is some 12 separate appearances of Jesus Christ before he ascends up to heaven. Remember, he's on the earth for 40 days, speaking to the disciples and teaching them and, and instructing them, bringing them up to speed about the prophetic program. And as the book of Acts opens and as each of these gospel accounts close, he ascends up to the Father. A cloud receives him up out of their sight. But there are 12 separate appearances recorded in the scriptures, uh, multiple places to different people. Um, it's, it's a remarkable thing. Um, Mark chapter 16, verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. That's what we just read there in the Gospel of John. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. So here's the disciples. They're not expecting a resurrection. They're not preaching. Jesus is going to die for their sins and was bur be buried and raised again the third day as the author of eternal life. There's a different gospel message being preached and proclaimed here. And these people are disappointed because they thought Jesus was going to be a king, going to be their king and, and deliver them. So he appears appears to, the, to Mary Magdalene, and she went and told them as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed what? Not. They're, they're not preaching the, the crucifixion as good news, like you and I preach it and talk, talk about it. There's a different program going on here. Um, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they, them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he had been risen. Now you get to verse 14. That's the evening of his resurrection. That's Sunday night. Come to the book of Luke, chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We're not, I'm not going to give you all of these separate events. We're not going to walk through each and every one of them. Um, you, can kinda, you can see the list there, and you can look up the verses if you want. Um, Luke chapter 24, um, verse 10. Luke 24, verse 10. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women which were with them, which told these things unto the apostles, and their words seemed unto them as idle tales, and they believed them not. So here again, they're not expecting the resurrection. Uh, then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher, and stooping down, beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which, had, which was come to pass. You know, You'd think, he'd say, well, yeah, yeah, the Lord said he was going to raise from the dead. That must be what happened. No, he's, he's uncertain, unsure. Then from verse 13 all the way down to verse 31, the Lord appears to two of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. It's about a seven-mile journey, and he's with, he, he appears to these two men, and they have dialogue, and they're talking back and forth. And uh, at first, they don't recognize who he is. Um, um, let's see, um, verse um, 22. And certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even, as, even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Verse 25, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses he, and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though uh, he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. This is late in the afternoon. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, and blessed it, and brake, 
and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. They finally recognize that this is Jesus who was crucified and he's risen from the dead. <laughs> and look at verse 31. They knew him and he vanished out of their sight. He just flat out disappeared. He has a resurrection body that has the capacity to appear and disappear at will and to travel from earth to the heavens and back has the capacity to eat, has a voice that sounds just like the voice that he had previous. It's, it's an amazing thing. But he has, he has the ability to appear and disappear uh, at will. Verse 33, And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with him. Now they, they had the eleven. Why is there only eleven apostles? Judas has committed suicide. All right? Okay, so Judas has committed suicide. Um, but I'm going to show you something else here. Um, verse 34, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. So at this point, the Lord has already had a separate appearance personally to Peter. We're not told any more than just that, that verse right there. We're told in 1 Corinthians that he appeared to Cephas. Um, verse 35 and they told what things were done in the way and how he, had, uh, he was known of them in breaking bread and as he thus spake Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them peace be unto you but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit all of a sudden Jesus just he vanishes in verse 31 now they're in a room having dinner, an evening meal, and all of a sudden he appears. <laughs> he has the ability to, to vanish and to appear at will. Um, the Gospel of John says they were sitting and eating and the doors were shut. <laughs> Walk right through the wall and appear. Not, not limited by matter. I see Richard smiling over there. Um, he's looking forward to that. He's going to, you know, um, this, is, this is something that it's a, it's a remarkable thing as we, as we read these verses the apostle Paul later talks about our resurrection you know that we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump and this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal will put on immortality and we're going to be changed in a, in a moment and we're going to have a body fashioned like unto his glorious body and yet with the same appearance that we have we'll be able to recognize sometimes people ask the question are we going to recognize people in heaven sure you will you'll have the same physical appearance you'll appear I believe personally as a 33 year old Jesus was 33 years old when he was crucified um, no gray hair no glasses spectacles um, you're going to have a 33-year-old. When Adam and Eve were created in the Garden of Eden, where they, they were created, they had the appearance of adults, didn't they? And yet they were only a couple of days old. Um, I believe Adam and Eve were probably created with the appearance of age, probably 20 to 30 years of age as adults. Um, it's, just, it's just remarkable here. Um, Verse number 38, And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold, my hands and my feet, it is I myself. Handle me and see me. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye have. It's a spiritual body, but it's a body that's subject to touch. Even though he can change the molecular structure and, and appear and disappear and walk through walls and appear in the or, or you know appear right through the through the ceiling of a building, and yet you could touch it and, and see it and, and put your hand put your finger in the in the uh, the holes in his hand. Uh, I saw an interesting post the other day. Um, what are the five things, five man-made things that will be in heaven? you know that there are five man-made things in heaven? The wounds in the Lord Jesus. Two wounds in each of his hands, two wounds in his feet, and the uh, 
the, the wound in his side. Five man-made things in heaven. Uh, isn't that kind of a, a kicker? <laughs> he, he, is going, he is going to have that body now for, forever, for eternity. He changed his form when he came to be a man, to be a human, and made in the likeness of men. And that physical body was marred on the cross, shed blood, poured out his blood as an offering for sin, gave up the ghost, he dismissed his spirit, spent three days in the grave, his soul and his spirit went to paradise, but that, that body raised from the dead in the, in the same form. It's remarkable there. Um, and so um, verse 40, when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, wondered and sa he said unto them, Have you here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. Hey, that's good news too. <laughs> we have the capacity to eat. I don't know what will be eaten in heaven. Um, but it's just, it's just a remarkable, remarkable thing here. Um, when it says that they believe not for joy, it's, uh, it's not that they're, they're still doubting so, so much. Is They're just saying, I can't believe it. <laughs> it's, a, it's an exclamation. It's a positive exclamation. Come to the Gospel of John. John chapter 20. There's these multiple appearances of Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to try to put them exactly in order for you. Um, I have them listed there. That, that's probably the order, but they could, they could be shifted a little bit. But, you know, you can, you can work on that if you want. John chapter 20. He, we, we, we read this already where he appeared to Mary. Um, John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them peace be unto you he just appeared in, into that room while the, while the doors were shut when he had so said he showed them his hands and his side then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord then Jesus said unto them again peace be unto you as my father has sent me even so uh, send I you. And when he had thus, when he said thus, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Um, gives them the power and the authority to, to remit sins. Now, verse 24, look at this. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And Thomas, what is Thomas's nickname? Thomas. Doubting Thomas. He says, you know, I, I, I'm not going to believe. Um, verse 26, after eight days, again, the disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. Now, see, this is, this is a week later after the resurrection. He's still appearing in Jerusalem. They haven't made their way up north up to Galilee yet. Um, the doors were shut. And Jesus, and, and he stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy, thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Now, we read, Matthew, we, we read Mark and Luke. How many did he appear to the night of his resurrection? Eleven, right? Here in John, Thomas is not there, and Judas is not there. So how many apostles does that leave? Ten, right? But the scripture says eleven. That means Matthias was there. And Matthias, he was the one that was chosen to take Judas's place. So he has not been officially chosen. He is not officially chosen until the book of Acts opens when Jesus after Jesus has ascended and gone away. When the scripture says he appeared unto the eleven, it's really ten plus Matthias, only Matthias hasn't been made official yet. Because the night of his resurrection, Thomas isn't there. Thomas isn't there till a week later. Well, it's just, just kind of interesting as you see that. See, the scripture validates the choice of Matthias. Some people think it should have been Paul. Right? They should have waited. Paul was the great apostle. 
Why did they pick this no-name guy named Matthias? What? Well, they, they, they say they should have waited. They're being presumptuous. They should have waited, followed the Lord's leading, because Paul would have been a good, a good choice when he finally, when he finally got saved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we know that. Anyway, um, so I, you, just, you just see these multiple, these multiple events here. Um, John chapter 21. Turn to John chapter 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. On this wise showed he himself. Now the Sea of Tiberias, you know the name for that? Is the Sea of Galilee. That's, that's up north. This is another appearance somewhat later than the night of his resurrection or a week later when he appears to Tom. See, they've finally gotten up into, into Galilee up there and they, they have a meeting up there in, in Galilee with Christ and the, and the disciples. Come to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Here, the, here is the Apostle Paul. Um, the reason Paul, Paul didn't qualify to be one of the 12 apostles because he had a different ministry. He was the apostle to the Gentiles. He was saved later and given the real message of Christianity. Um, then he's out here preaching his gospel among the Gentiles. Um, he says, verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. There's our gospel, beloved, isn't it? Uh, but the twelve apostles, they're preaching a gospel, aren't they? They're preaching the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. Yet they don't know Jesus was even going to be crucified. It's just a different program. And when you come to the Bible, you recognize that progression. Here is our program. Here's the, the message out among the Gentiles. So he, was, he died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4, he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now look, here's the, here's the appearances. Verse 5, and he was seen of Cephas. There's the personal private appearance to Peter or to Simon Peter. Then of the 12, um, that's going to be all 12. That's going to be counting Matthias, um, even though he's not official yet till after the ascension. Uh, after that, verse 6, he was seen of about 500 brethren at once, at one time. Jesus, during that 40-day period, had an appearance. See, he was able to, to just all of a sudden appear at a point in time. He appeared in one place where there were 500 people gathered, and he says, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Most of those 500 people were still alive almost 30 years later when Paul writes the book of 1 Corinthians. See, that's that, that's that timeline as you follow the events as they're recorded in the New Testament. That's remarkable. See, the, the resurrection, if the resurrection was not an absolute fact of history, you could discredit the Bible and all of God's word would collapse, wouldn't it? Jesus is a fraud. Um, the Bible's not true. And we're just following some imposter, some religious huckster that's got a bunch of people bamboozled. But with all of these accounts, the resurrection is an absolute fact of history. And it couldn't be disproven. They got the, you know why? They got the empty tomb and they got the grave clothes laid there, but no body. It's a, it's a remarkable thing. Um, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James. There's a personal appearance to the apostle James. Then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also. This is Paul, as one born out of due time. He appeared to Paul 
on the road to Damascus. You know, the, the, the light that was above the, the, above the brightness of the sun. And saved Paul on the road to Damascus and commissioned him to go with his ministry to the Gentiles. So there's all of these amazing appearances of Jesus Christ. The resurrection is an established fact and it rocked the world here in Jerusalem. And uh, come back, I, I say all that, come back to Matthew 28 because there was an attempted cover up. Because the religious leaders, they wanted, they, they wanted no part of this. They wanted him, uh, they thought they were over and done with. So Matthew chapter 28 verse 11 picks up with the cover up. Because that empty tomb um, is, uh, is upsetting the apple cart of the religious establishment there. Um, Matthew, Matthew 28, verse 11. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. You know who the watch is? It's the soldiers that were commissioned to guard the empty tomb. Go back to Matthew 27. Matthew 27, verse 60, is where he's laid in the tomb. Verse 62. Matthew 27, 62. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Did, did his enemies and opponents, did they believe he claimed that he was going to raise from the dead? Yeah. And, uh, but they don't believe in the resurrection. They just think the disciples are going to come steal the body. Are the disciples in any, um, any mental state to challenge the authority of the Roman government and soldiers, trained killers that are, that are right there at the tomb to guard, the, soldier, to guard the, the tomb? Absolutely not. These guys are totally defeated. Um, but they want, to, they, they want to be sure just in case. Verse 65, Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way and make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. They set the soldiers at the tomb and they put a seal, the Roman seal, over, it was, people not, not really sure if it, it was a, perhaps a wax seal that was, that was put in place and then the imprint of the Roman authorities were put, placed on that because if the stone was tampered and moved somebody would know and to tamper with the Roman seal in a situation like that brought, death, brought the death penalty because you're messing with the official decree of the emperor as, as his authority is passed down to, the, to, to those in authority underneath him. Um, so they, they make, the, they make the, the sepulcher sure. Now notice something here. Verse 62 says the next day that followed the day of the preparation. Remember when we went through the, the chronology? There was an extra Sabbath day that they left the, the Lord on the cross. Or he was on the cross Thursday afternoon. And they say, we got to get the body down because it's the preparation. There was a second special Sabbath. He was crucified on Thursday afternoon. You have the preparation day, which was a separate special Sabbath that would have been Friday. Okay? Because you got three days and three nights. You have this preparation. You have these crucified on Thursday. Then you have this special Sabbath, this preparation day. Then he says... Verse 6, the next day that followed the day of the preparation. What day would that have been? That would have been Saturday. Saturday morning, they say, hey, he said he was going to rise on the third day. So Saturday morning, they go. See, you think this tomb is, is sealed right as they put him in. But a day and a half has passed since all that. You've had that 
second Sabbath there. So Saturday morning, they go to, the, they go to Pilate, say, we want to seal the tomb. He says, okay, you have a watch. Make it as sure as you can. And they seal it. Saturday morning, they do that. In less than 24 hours, he's going to be risen from the dead. See, it's not an extended time that these soldiers are guarding the tomb. It's just that Saturday morning, throughout the day Saturday, they're guarding it. Saturday night, but he raises from the dead Saturday night before sunup on Sunday morning. It's interesting. So they make it secure here. Well, what happened to the soldiers? Chapter 28, verse 4, when the angel came down, chapter 28, verse 4, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. They passed out. Now, whether they're laying on the ground as the women come, or they pass out and the Lord raises from the dead and they realize that it's empty and then they go, I, I don't know how which actually happens first. But when they wake up, they see the empty tomb and they say, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, not only was it the death penalty to tamper with the Roman seal, the soldiers were subject to the death penalty for dereliction of duty because they were responsible to guard the tomb. They're not going to let just anybody come, oh yeah, you guys want to take the body? Yeah, go ahead, no big deal. Um, they're going to fight to the death because their life is on the line. As, see how, how the, the efforts of man to try to thwart God's purpose actually makes the resurrection a greater miracle? <laughs> All these things. So anyway, the keepers wake up and the tomb is dead. The tomb is empty, and they go, "Uh oh, we're in hot water." So that's what we have. We have the cover up, and it's only in the book of Matthew, the book of the King, the political gospel, if you will. So there's this, there's this, there's this turmoil here. So there's going to be a cover up, a governmental cover up. <laughs> yeah, corruption, right? So verse, verse 11, Now when they were going, some of the, the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all, all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they have a meeting. We've got to do something about this. They gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Is this a good idea? I mean, if they're sleeping and the, and the disciples stole the body, does that get the guys off the hook? No. It gives an explanation to the empty tomb, but the soldiers, their necks are still on the line. So they've got to buy off the soldiers, and they institute a lie, a false narrative, to explain the empty tomb, but the soldiers, they're... You've, we've got to, you've got to take care of us guys you know, or, or, or we're going to sing like canaries <laughs> we're going to tell what really happened <laughs> so what do they do they gave large money they buy the soldiers silence to the truth and they're going to propagate the lie that the body was stolen while they slept but that doesn't solve the problem because if they're sleeping on the job they're still guilty um, verse 14 and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and secure you you know who the governor is the governor's Pilate remember how we, we saw last time how, how Pilate did all these contortions to try to get Jesus released and he couldn't <laughs> and he, uh, you know, uh, he washes his hands I'm innocent of the blood of this just person you know you guys and, and how Pilate had Jesus scourged to try to, to, to try to placate the Jews so they would let him go? Listen, Pilate's a snake. <laughs> He's a corrupt politician. You can buy the soldiers' silence, and you can buy Pilate's silence, too. There's all kinds of corruption going on here. Um, and it's all done by the religious leaders. Um, it's a, they know the truth. They know the tomb is empty. They know he's risen from the dead. They know the soul. They they, 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 they know he claimed to be the son of God. Um, and the soldiers know the truth. Pilate 
Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's just wassling back and forth. Um, if it come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Pilate was in the pocket of the religious leaders too. Why do you think that, how do you think they could get him to have, have an innocent man crucified? You know, I say all that to say government corruption is nothing new. And you know what? You, you read all this and it looks like they got away with it, doesn't it? But they know the truth and Pilate knows the truth and the, religion, the corrupt religious leaders know the truth. They're denying the truth. And you know something else? God knows the truth because he recorded the truth in his word and I, I say that to say when it looks like politicians are going to get away with their corruption and we want our pound of flesh um, they will all stand before God one day whether as a, as a saved person they will give an account of their responsibility and the, the, the office that they um, execute whether they're unsaved people They'll appear before the great white throne judgment and be judged according to their works. So don't worry about the politicians getting away with it. Because ultimately, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So you know what? We can be good citizens and we can make our case and we can talk, but at the end of the day, God will take care of it. So let's just be, let's be about what we have to be about. Amen? Okay? So um, verse 15, So they took the money. The soldiers take the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. The rumor continues. But the people at the time know the truth. And the resurrection was a fact. And 500 people could attest to it and all these other, all these other events. And, um, and by the way, if they came and stole the body, why weren't the disciples ever arrested for the crime? <laughs> they didn't, did they? Um, they should have, if that's, if that's the truth, they should have, you know, there should have been warrants for, 12 warrants for arrests. <laughs> and, uh, but they, they never did. Uh, just an evidence of the, of the weakness there. So verse 16, uh, we're not going to go through the commission. I'm going to talk about the commissions next week. But let's just read the rest of the verses and finish the book. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. So now Matthew picks up the narrative where? Up in Galilee. This is at least a week and a half after the actual resurrection. Because remember the Lord appeared the night and then eight days later appeared again when Thomas was there. So now they're up in Galilee. Um, and this is called the King's Commission. Um, the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. A mountain is a symbol of a kingdom in the Bible. Um, Matthew is the book of the king. And so you're going to see this, this, this king. The Lord is up in a mountain. And, he, and when, he had, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted, so still some uncertain. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He's got the authority now, but he's not executing it yet. See, he's not coming back in vengeance and, and great wrath yet. But he's got the power. He's got the authority. And now he's going to commission his disciples. Um, he says in verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even under the end of the world. And here's Matthew's account um, of the Lord commissioning his disciples before his ascension. And this is what is called the Great Commission. And people take the final words of the Lord when he was on earth. It's recorded in Matthew. There's another account in Mark. There's another account in Luke. And there's another account in John. And there's one verse in the book of Acts where he commissions his disciples and then he, is, he ascends up into heaven. And people take these final words and say that it's the commission for, the, for us as the church, the body of Christ today. And it will not work because this is a Jewish commission. 
and we'll talk about just for the because time has kind of slipped away we'll talk about all five accounts next week um, the term the Great Commission is not biblical the Great Commission um, God doesn't call it the Great Commission you know who calls it the Great Commission men do and because they have propped this up because it's the Lord's final words on earth they try to make it fit Christianity today and none of these five accounts fit today in the age of grace there is not one person church or denomination that actually does what any of these commissions specifically say and those that try to do it are actually contradicting things that are said later through the ministry of the Apostle Paul in the age of grace and his gospel. We'll talk about that next time. Um, but we will we'll conclude our official study in the book of Matthew. But we'll take some time next week and we'll look at Mark, uh, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, John 20, and Acts chapter 1. All five accounts are given by the Lord to the same 12 men within a 40-day period of time. It's one commission with five different accounts and five different aspects to it. But it fits in the prophetic program for the nation of Israel. Our commission comes from our apostle, the apostle Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles. And his gospel is Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. And we're saved today just by resting in what Jesus did for us on the cross in the death and the burial and the resurrection. These guys spend a, a, a lot of time figuring all of that out as far as the death, burial, and resurrection. It's because there's a different program in effect. But today, eternal life is a free gift, isn't it? We have 2020 hindsight. <laughs> as chaotic as the, the year 2020 is, you know, 2020 hindsight, we look back and we got the full revelation of God's word about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and what it meant to you and I. And when Jesus came, we, we understand that he was coming to die not just to save his people from their sins, but to save all men and give his life a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The Apostle Paul opens up the crucifixion and gives the full floodlight of revelation on it for us. And we'll talk about that next time. Okay? Do you have a question or comment? Richard's looking forward to that new body. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Yeah. All the uh, all the artificial knees and the new heart valves that we got, all that we're going to leave all those behind, and uh, the the spectacles and the hearing aids. Yeah. Anybody? Okay. Let's have a word of prayer together. Father, thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for the the resurrection of Jesus Christ that uh, as a historical fact it validates the Bible from one end to the other. It validates your truth and the predictions about who Jesus Christ was going to, going to be and what he was going to do. It validates who he is as the Son of God. And Father, it validates our faith, that, we're, that our faith is not based in superstition, but it's based in absolute truth, a living Savior who gave his life a ransom for all, and that included us. And we just rejoice in that, Lord. And as we, as we live in these troubled times, may we rest and rejoice that the, the, ultimate, um, the ultimate vindication of your righteousness and justice will be executed by your Son when he returns. And in the meantime, Lord, we have purpose. And uh, in, in this dark world, Lord, to preach that wonderful message of salvation. Uh, to each individual that we come in contact with. We thank you for that. that that's a wonderful message of peace and joy in the midst of troubled times. We thank you for all that. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay.